Hey everyone, this is Sandy with Sewing with Sandy and ltdquilting.com. And I'd like to talk a little bit about this boho heart sew along that we've been working on on my Facebook Sewing with Sandy page. We are getting to the point where we've got a lot of the blocks done and we can start thinking about putting this quilt together. Now, the interesting thing about putting this quilt together is that in the instructions, it doesn't really tell you what blocks go where. You are going to have to figure that out through the photo on the front and photos inside the book. You're gonna to have to figure out which blocks correspond to what's on the front. So for example, this particular block here is the intersection block. Um, there's two garden veil blocks. This is one of them here. This is one of them up here. So what I did, what I would suggest you do, is I went into the instructions on how to put it together. And I can't really show you a lot because it's not, um, I can't, compromise the pattern but basically what I did was I took um, page 30 uh, that is where the layout map is and I just took a photocopy of that page and I went in and I penciled in all of the block names where they are on this quilt on the front of the pattern um, so, for example, here is the four links block, and um, here we have an offset Dresden square, and I believe this one over here is called windswept. So, that is going to be a little bit time consuming for you. I suggest you work on it now. The next thing that I would suggest is there, the quilt is put together in sections that are, and then ultimately what she calls groups. So we have group one, group two, group three, group four. And each group is several sections sewn together into this big long group, okay? Now there's a lot of blocks and there's getting to be more and more blocks. So I started to think about how can I organize this in a way that's gonna make some sense and not be hunting and hunting through all these blocks that I have finished, especially when my blocks don't necessarily look like their blocks as far as color placement and that kind of thing. So what I came up with is find yourself some envelopes, some um, large Ziploc bags, some file folders, something that you can use to organize your blocks for each group and then possibly even sub organize into sections. I hope this is making sense. So I will show you what I have done. Um, I have these folders that I got off of Amazon at some point. They happen to be clear. And so this is what an empty one looks like. And I actually got these all one one time, one order, they all came in one order. So what I have done is this particular one, sorry for all the moving stuff around, but this particular one is labeled Boho Heart Group One, sections one through four. Now, uh, group one doesn't have as many blocks. It's, it's a lot of background. So that's why I have all the sections within this one envelope. You may wanna do it differently. So this one is group two, sections one through three. Um, this one is group two, sections four through seven. So again, if you go into the back of the pattern, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, if you go into the back of the pattern and look how they, maybe you'll want one plastic baggie for every single section in each group, each to his own. Okay, so I just grouped mine together. 
um, in what I thought would be manageable. So I've got group three, sections four and five, group four, sections one and two. And you can see that I've started putting my blocks, <coughs> excuse me, and my little filler blocks into these envelopes so that I'll be ready when I start to put stuff together, I'll be able to figure out which block is which. Now, um, having said that, just keep in mind, if you wait till the very end to put it together, then you'll have the option of moving blocks around and putting them somewhere that might be more aesthetically pleasing as to depending on what your color choices were. So let's say that um, as I'm going along here and sewing, I do my garden veil block here is lime green and hot pink. And then without realizing it, I did this, um, I think this one's called the flying geese block, also in hot pink and lime green. And I did this flying geese section in hot pink and lime green. But then several of my other blocks are purples, grays, um, teals, etc. I'm going to have one big, huge clump of hot pink and lime green right here that's going to stand out. And I'm not going to like that. So if I wait till the very end and I have all the blocks done, then I can lay my sections out and I can move blocks around. An eight inch block is an eight inch block. It doesn't matter if it's here or up here or over here. And so you'll be able to have some uh, creativity, some ability to move things into places that maybe you might like better in your final quilt, okay? Having said that, um, I am going to go ahead and put section one or group one, I guess it's called, I'm going to go ahead and put group one up on my design wall and see how everything is looking in group one. <clears throat> and uh, also that will give me the opportunity to audition background and what I intend to do with my background. So I'm going to put that up and I will show you how that's looking on the Sewing with Sandy Facebook page this week so that you can get an idea of how that group one is going together and you can choose to do the same thing or you can choose to wait until the end however i still think after spending at least an hour um, trying to sort and get these blocks into these various plastic folders um now is a good time to start doing that. Start, as you're making blocks, start putting them in marked folders or bags or whatever, so that at the end, you don't have this entire huge quilt worth of blocks to figure out, okay, was this a, you know, was this a six inch checkerboard or was this an eight inch checkerboard or was this, you know, whatever. It's just, there's a lot of blocks and again, when yours aren't colored the same as the ones in the pattern example on the front, they are confusing to try and figure out what's what. Add to that situations like uh, where I want to maybe use, um, let's say instead of this little applique heart block right here, I maybe want to fussy cut a flower out of my Tula Pink fabric that is that size of block. Okay, so that then will need to go into whatever this is, group three, section one. If I have that in there, I will know where it goes, okay? Um, another example, these pinwheel blocks, there's little pinwheel blocks throughout the entire quilt. Okay, I did mine in a variety of colors, but, um, Orange and lime green were two of the colors. I don't want all of my orange ones clumped together, like these three here. I don't want them all to be orange. So just keep in mind that a design wall 
and the ability to lay this thing out is going to really help you have a more aesthetically pleasing quilt in the end. That's all for today. Thank you.